Dear friends, we present this video with the intention of highlighting some of the lurking and inherent dangers that one can face in the management of polar cataracts. Let us take it step by step. At the outset, we need to fashion a very good clear corneal incision in order to maintain good chamber stability throughout the phaco emulsification procedure. We need to assess the grade of nuclear sclerosis that is present along with the polar cataract. Another important step is that we have to carefully and diligently fashion a 5 to 5.5 millimeter capsular rexis so that this will act as a saving device in case we encounter a posterior capsular rent so that we can capture the optic within the capsular rexis margin. The biggest pressure point in the management of polar cataracts is performing an adequate and a proper hydrodelineation and in avoiding a cortical cleavage hydrodissection. Now for the purpose of performing the hydrodelineation, we need to choose the right type of cannula. The cannula that we recommend is that we use a sharp beveled cannula which can be insinuated through the epinucleus till it hitches against the hard nucleus core after which a small aliquot of fluid can be injected in order to delineate the endonucleus very clearly. Please avoid using round cannulas or blunt tipped cannulas which will be difficult to push through the substance of the epinucleus. Other important thing to remember is that we should avoid performing cortical cleavage hydrodissection because it is believed that there is a dense adhesion that exists between the polar cataract and the posterior capsule which is also slightly thin overlying this area and a cortical cleavage hydrodissection may actually end up splitting the posterior capsule. For nucleus management, we need to employ what is known as low flow parameters or slow motion FACO. What this means is that the bottle height instead of the normal 90 to 100 centimeters is kept at around 80 centimeters. The aspiration flow rate instead of the normal 32 to 35 is now kept around 26 to 28 cc per minute. And the vacuum instead of the usual 350 millimeters of mercury is now kept at around 260 to 280 millimeters of mercury. Now the advantage of using low flow parameters while performing phaco emulsification is that it prevents stretching of the equator of the capsular bag. When the anterior chamber is insufflated with fluid, it will cause the posterior bowing of the capsule as well, deepening of the anterior chamber, and this can compromise the already thin posterior capsule. In this case, since nucleus rotation is not possible, I perform what is known as an in situ chop. This is a grade 2 nucleosclerotic polar cataract. So after burying the phaco tip, I'm able to crack it into two halves without rotating the endonucleus. I then create another pie-shaped fragment with further chopping. And this is carefully emulsified and mobilized. The resultant half of the endonucleus can be simply priced out of the capsular bag with the help of the sharp chopper and emulsified. After which the other half of the endonucleus can be moved out of the capsular bag by impaling it with the phaco tip and drawing it out of the bag. It is then brought to the safe zone and then carefully emulsified. Now we are left with an epinuclear sheet which would be very difficult to remove. I use a ball tip dialer. I go underneath the capsular axis edge and using the ball dialer I sweep across the epinuclear sheet trying to cleave it from the posterior capsule. 
Well, you can use a visco dissection as well in order to lift this epinuclear sheet. But as you can see in this particular case, simply with the help of a ball dialer, I was able to separate the epinuclear shell from the underlying capsule. I was able to tug on it and bring it centrally and then grasp it with my phaco tip itself and completely remove most of the epinuclear sheet. Finally, cortical aspiration is done. Now, before pulling out the phaco probe, it is a good idea to use a viscofluid exchange to stop the irrigation flow, put in viscoelastic, and then come out of the anterior chamber. But since I was using low flow parameters, this is sometimes not needed. Most of the cortex is aspirated from the capsular bag and the capsular bag is very clean. There is a nice central 5mm capsular rexis and the last step of course is to implant the intraocular lens. In this uh, case I am implanting a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens into the capsular bag. But remember that the biggest challenges in the polar cataract is in avoiding hydrodissection and performing a proper hydro delineation for which you need the proper cannula which is a sharp tip bevel cannula we need to properly manage the endonucleus this can be done by an in situ chop so after the viscoelastic is washed out by butt compression the wound is sealed and the polar cataract has been successfully managed. I thank you for your attention.